Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, here with Matt Klaskowski. How are you? Doing good, buddy. How about you? Thanks for flying up from <laughs> uh, Florida this morning. Hey, you know what? It's, uh, it's all for a good reason. We can, it is. We can talk about all this stuff we, uh, via the internet and all that stuff all we want, but being right here is gonna gonna help out a lot. Yeah, so I asked Matt to come up here to, because he is the Photoshop expert. He also is the Lightroom expert that I learned from at the very beginning, but we thought it would be great to go through Photoshop, run you through his Photoshop system, give you real world examples so you can see how this stuff is done and you can actually use this real world stuff and put it into practice right now. So with that being said, Matt, what are we jumping into first? So I was gonna, uh, I was gonna do probably the number one reason, because the idea of, I think for, for most Lightroom users, the idea of Photoshop is when Lightroom's not enough. And Lightroom's got tools that'll help you get rid of little spots and things like that, but there's gonna be times where it's just not gonna be enough. So I think the biggest one is just cloning, healing, like removing stuff from photos. So I got a, uh, I got, in fact, I got one of your pictures here. And there's all these people over on the left hand side. Um, if you're in Lightroom, it's, it's super easy to get to Photoshop. You just go photo, edit in, and then you edit. It's, it'll pull up whatever version of Photoshop you have installed. And Content Aware has been around for a while. You know, it's interesting though. So when I, when I took this, I wished that the people weren't there. Uh, and I'm, I'm too lazy myself to want to go ahead and edit it most of the time yeah. after the fact. So I do my tweakings in Lightroom and I rarely jump into Photoshop when it comes to the images, uh, except for when I'm making thumbnails. But when I started to watch your system, I was like, oh, you made it look easy. And I think that's the thing is people think it's got to be hard. Like, oh, I don't know Photoshop. This has got to be hard. And, and, and things like this, like all we did was jump over to Photoshop and literally, dude, I grab the, I'll grab a lasso tool. It's basically, we just have to make a selection and lasso around. That's like a free flow lasso. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it with my trackpad. Um, we make a selection, lasso around where the people are, hit the delete key, comes up with this little dialog box and you say, yes, do your content aware magic, click OK, done. It just reminds me of Spaceballs. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't found. Comb the desert. <laughs> you know, he, he's got an afro pick when he's combing know, the desert. I, know, I, know. I love that scene. My brother and I used to rewind the beta tape quite often. <laughs> so it was that simple to remove them. Yeah. No, I mean, I, it, I'm assuming it's going to be harder for certain situations where it wasn't the desert. Yeah, obviously you can you have all kinds of different levels of, of degrees of, of difficulty and all this. And I've got more examples we can dive into, but I thought just to show somebody, hey, it, look how quick it is, and all I have to do is I'll hit File, Save, and that saves a copy of the image. If I go back over here to Lightroom, you're gonna see there's our people photo, and there is our one without, so. Which I didn't know when I watched your Photoshop system. I had no idea that if I hit Save, it wouldn't ask me to save it to the desktop and then have to bring it back into Lightroom. Yeah, that's a big one too. I think a lot of people get messed up in that workflow and thinking that like if I'm gonna go switch programs, it's gotta be difficult. And honestly, the, the biggest thing you can do is nothing. Like don't do save as, don't change the name, don't change the look, don't do anything, just file save. Right. Close it, go over it, here Photoshop, close, I'm done. Wow, so that was a simple one. That was an easy one. We've got tougher ones, but even just something that quick, a client may want this. I may not personally do it in my own photos, but if you have a distracting background, so you're doing a family photo and somebody's in the background doing something they shouldn't be doing, you can get rid of it and the family would never know any different and you just made that picture look awesome. So the, real, the, the major reason we're here today, Stephen, can we pop that up real quick? is to talk about Matt Klikowski's Photoshop system. Dude, you totally pronounced it right before we were on. Klikowski. <laughs> Wazowski? You just said Klikowski. Oh. 10 minutes ago, you said it right 10 well, times in a row. Klikowski. There you go. There you, I, you, I actually sorry. don't correct anybody. I stopped correcting people when I was 10. Klikowski. Yeah, that's, that's I'm, good I'm sorry. Matt my, K. That's, that's that, why I bought mattk.com. That makes it easy because who could spell Wazowski? <laughs> it's my, anyway, Matt has created the Photoshop system, which is 11 hours of Photoshop learning that is great for somebody like me who never jumps into Photoshop but uses Lightroom all the time. It's basically for when Lightroom isn't enough. I learned so much just skipping around the 11 hours by finding what I needed to learn 
I would just sit there. He'd have a, don't tell Matt I said this, but he would have a 10 minute video and I would just skip around <laughs> as he said each thing I need, each bullet point, and then I'd do it myself. But anyway, we're gonna talk, we're gonna show you real world stuff, but throughout this whole time, you can go to mattk.com slash fro and use the code FRO at checkout to save over a hundred bucks. This says a hundred bucks. You're gonna save more than a hundred dollars off while this sale is live. So use that code. It's gonna save you a hundred bucks. You get the 11 hours thing. It's great. But now we're gonna get back into giving you more free stuff. Free stuff's good. <laughs> free stuff. Can't give you everything here, but if you want more, you can definitely go check out that guide because it's awesome. All right, am I doing another one? Uh, yeah, more content aware. We're gonna more content aware. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to one that's a little bit a uh, little bit harder. Um, I'm gonna do it one more time through Lightroom here, and then and then we'll I'll start to open up images into Photoshop. Photoshop obviously exists without Lightroom too, so you don't always have to go through Lightroom. Let me preface this one real fast. Uh, can we show it? Just uh, this is Ken Rockwell. He was on the the Sony shoot with us, and I wanted to get this epic looking portrait of Ken. The only problem is there's all these other people, so it's not as epic. <laughs> and so I want to make it look as epic as possible, so I flew Matt up here from Florida so he could do it for me. There you go. Instead of just sending him the picture and having him do it. But he's going to show us how to get rid of these people. Uh, same same kind of MO as what we did before, so give it a second here. So in case you didn't know, when you're in Lightroom, you're working on the raw photo, when you jump over to Photoshop, um, it usually makes a copy of that raw photo for you. And so. First thing is zoom in, we'll grab our lasso tool, lasso around. So you were saying this is gonna be a little tougher. This, I, you know what, I don't even, I don't even know that. I, I only kind of actually did it. We deliberately ran through our examples kind of briefly here, so I only did a couple of them um, because we wanted it to actually feel like, you really? know, like, hey, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It, we'll see what happens, you know? So um, I don't know that it's that hard because I think Content Aware should do a good job on that one, I can't see doing anything wrong. Look at that. The only time sometimes, and I can't, I, every time I say like it's gonna give me a problem, it doesn't, is, is when you have somebody that kind of intersects with the sky. Yeah. Um, oh. But I don't even. That one didn't, because I know that sometimes you hit content aware and then you undo it, you hit it again, and it gives and it, you something different. Exactly, so, so who knows? We'll, we, will, uh, we, will, we will embark on this one together. We'll go grab those guys and do it. Um, there's also a, a neat way to do this. I'm doing it with the lasso tool. As you will find throughout your Photoshop journey, there are 75 ways to do everything. Mm. I always try to give people the way that works for me. I'll talk about some other ways that I know are popular that I get asked about. Um, and then sometimes I'll mention like, you know, I know a lot of people say this, but I don't use it because of this. Yeah. Or sometimes I'll just say, this works the same, this works the same, use either one you want. But in this example here, we have a, a brush called the Spot Healing Brush, and it actually works really good. It's got content aware built into it. I had no idea. So I can just brush. So to some people, it's easier to lasso a selection. For other people, it's easier to, to brush. Why didn't you tell me this existed before? Because you skipped that part in the course. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Darn, that 11 hours, I didn't watch the whole thing. You did thing. not watch the whole thing, which but I don't know that it's meant to all be watched. It's meant for people to jump in and what, out where they're supposed to. What I found very useful is the table of contents. I'm like, uh, content aware, I need to learn this. Okay, that's section seven, yeah. video six. That's exactly the way it's meant to be used. So not everybody needs everything. If we're not gonna pixel peep it, it's actually a really good example. Yeah. Um, if we're gonna pixel peep it a little bit, which you know, I, I think most people would never know we did anything. Yeah, here. like you moved a rock. When it doesn't work, you kind of called it. You said, you know, if it doesn't work once, maybe go try it again. And so maybe I'll, I'll kind of brush a bigger area and see if that helps. Not really. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I do is when it doesn't work, sometimes I'll do it like in halves. So I'll do half of whatever I want to remove, and then I'll do like another part of it. That's, it's still and insane that you can do that. I'll do another part of it. So sometimes that works. And then the other thing is Content Aware is an awesome tool. It's not the only tool for doing this stuff. So I'll give it a quick pass. I'll let it do its thing. And this is, this is probably more real world than anything. Um, while I'd love to say it always removes everything perfectly, it doesn't. But when it doesn't, the whole point is, is you go grab a tool that does. So for example, like the clone stamp tool, right? So the clone stamp tool is a tool we use 
which literally takes a clone. So I, I hold down Option or Alt. I used that back in like Photoshop 4 yeah, or whatever it was forever. introduced. But I'll, I'll Option or Alt click and that basically samples right there. And now I sample that texture and now I can start to paint. And then I can sample that texture here and start to paint. And then I can sample maybe up here and start to paint. And just start to blend them into each other. Eventually you get some you know, little repeating patterns and then Those you are footsteps, Matt. Sample again. So. They're, they're Ewoks <laughs> and Jawas. Combing the desert. Yeah, so that's... So, I mean, it's, you know, real world, it, I'd say it works really good most of the time. But that's, that, look at that though. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, those are probably some of the most magical tools inside of, uh, inside of Photoshop. Nice. Um, all right, one more example. So let's, uh, let's look at content aware gone bad. And let me, say, let me say this to you guys, that there's going to be a bunch of examples. This is going to be a pretty substantial video with a lot of learning. Not as much selling, mattk.com slash fro, <laughs> with the, uh, the code fro, but uh, really we want to give you as much information here as possible. And then hopefully if you find that you need more information and you would like to learn more, you could go to mattk.com slash fro and use the code fro to learn even more. I think, and I think you're a lot like me in that I, I don't want anybody to buy anything that they don't want. The, I don't want somebody to buy something just because it was on sale and then two weeks later realize I never should have bought that. Yeah. Like, I don't need it. Like, that's why we're doing this. Like, figure out, does, does the training style work for you? Does the content work for you? But I think we both want, want people to be happy with it. So, um, all right, here's a, here's a neat image. So I tried this one and Content Aware works really good. You can see we got a... Uh, we got the girl in the pink walking down the stairs here. So content aware, I think, works really good here. And let me tell people, this was taken with a Canon EOS M5. So it's a mirrorless camera that basically is an ADD in a mirrorless camera. So if you're wondering how it was, not these aren't all taken with pro cameras. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so we got her circled, hit the delete key. I think it should do pretty good here. I Close. can't tell the difference. I mean, there's a... Uh, the stairs. Actually, the stairs are... Eh, I mean, it's close. Yeah. Yeah. You, you'd have to really zoom in. Like, you know, we're, nobody's ever going to... Only a photographer would zoom that far in. And, and this <laughs> is the uh, Philadelphia Museum of Art, by the way. That's where Rocky ran up the stairs. Is this the Rocky steps? Those are. They're about to be changed forever, too. Really? Uh, they're cutting out the middle portion. There's actually catacombs underneath that were never finished in the 1800s that they're going to put to use now. See? A history lesson. History well. lesson too. All right. Now, these people over here. So I thought, all right, let's give it a try. Um, I think the more you, you use this stuff, you start to realize like it's probably not going to do a good job here. There's just, there's too much change in that background, but we'll give it a fair shot. So, not going to do it, right? No. So, again, you know, my whole thing, my whole thing when I created the Photoshop system was walk somebody through the different layers of what they would use. You know, start at the basics. Start at, here's a, the interface, here's the, all these little tools you see people grab. Um, and then work up to, what, here's what a layer is, and here's what you can do with layers, and then here's removing distractions. And then when I get into that stuff, something like this always happens. So now you think, all right, my, my distraction removal tools don't work. So the easy stuff is the what easy you're stuff the easy stuff doesn't work so then it kind of it's almost fun because it kind of gets creative because you then you start to look at the photo and say like well how could i fix this i can't rebuild this wall from scratch but i do have the wall over here can i interrupt you real quick you can cuz there is something i want to tell you guys that this is a, a situation well you may not be manipulating your photojournalistic work no. But if you're on a family vacation and there's no way of getting nobody else in the scene but the skateboarder guy, if, if that's what you wanted, or a family member, you wanted to get rid of all the distractions, then this is something that you could go in and do to get rid of those people. Yeah. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is not photojournalistic type of work. This is more, this is more uh, family vacations and I want, my photo's not turned out the way that I want it. Um, all right. So I made a, uh, I just made a little circle selection of this area over here. I copy and paste, and then, if you'll notice, take a look at my layers panel over here. You see I got this 
this little layer, it's just this little kind of cutout of that one part. How'd you do that? So just, I made a selection. Oh, and you copied and pasted Copy it. Copy and paste. And it opens up a new layer. And it automatically puts it onto a new layer. Huh, okay. So, copy, paste, puts it onto a new layer. This new layer, I can now, I, it, it, I, I can move it anywhere I want. I can do whatever I want with it. So, what I would do is take it, and there's a little tool in here. You go edit, transform, and you go to flip. We want to go horizontal. So you flip horizontal. For all my readers, I call it horizontally. Horizontally. And then move it over here. Because it's on its own layer, because we have that over here, we can reduce the opacity and start to see through it. And then I kind of just move it into place. So we're really looking just for the blocks here, and then you'll get rid of the other stuff. I'm yeah, I'm looking at that line, and I'm looking at the bottom of the stairs. And you can even use your arrow keys to kind of nudge it into place. So I'm trying to get that line on the wall. I know the tones don't match up yet, but if I can get that line on the wall to match up, and I can get the bottom, we're pretty good. OK? I do this a lot during, during the Photoshop system, because I kind of it's kind of meant for a beginner-ish to intermediate. You're in that I'm new range to I'm a little bit dangerous range. Um, so I do this a lot. There's a, there's a whole part of the course that's about masking. Masking sounds super intimidating to people. Just the word masking sounds intimidating. So, um, so what I always tell people is you could press E for the eraser tool and literally go in here and just erase out the parts that don't fit. Oh. OK? So you could do that. What, what they call it's the destructive way to do it. Because the problem is, is as I start to finesse this, if I realize, well, you know what? I want to pull back a little bit of the tones from here. Or I want to, The problem is, is I'd have to keep undoing all my, the whole way back. So part of the course as we get higher is that I teach layer masking which is a non-destructive way to do this. So this is the point when Matt is in his videos and he's going into extra <laughs> details. This is when I skip ahead a couple of seconds and go, okay, give me the next point. <laughs> but the thing is, I sometimes have to go back and listen to what he said for when I failed to do it right. But that's the whole point. You, each, each video that he creates in the system, you can, they're like 10 minute pieces or five minutes sometimes. You watch what you need, you jump around, you come back, you, you find what you need when you need it. And I expect a lot of people, the moment I say, the easy way to do this is with the eraser tool, I expect most people to say, okay, cool, I'm done. Yeah. You know, like, I don't wanna go that extra step. You don't have to. But anyway, so I did it with the eraser tool. I did it the destructive but way, but. Even with the shadow there, cause we know as photographers, yeah. the shadow, gives it away a little bit, but it actually blends in there pretty well with the other shadows. It's just a little darker. I, I would challenge, I challenge. Actually, you know what's funny? It's possible that we took this in the early afternoon anyway. So the sun would have been. Could have been. Almost up right there. Right here-ish. Where's Vigor? Can we put Vigor in there? <laughs> but, uh, and then there's all these little tools and tricks. Like I could go to, um, I could go grab, you know, we have dodging and burning in here. And I could go grab my dodge tool, and I could go over here, and I could start to paint it and make it a little bit brighter. So you've got tools to help do all that stuff, too. But the moral but, of the story is we had a girl in pink, we had a family to the right, and now all we wanted was a skateboarder, and we've, we've got them all. Yeah. I mean, we got, yeah. geez, I wish I could be that good. I wish I could be that good in there. The, the, but I, I, all <laughs> so, I need to do is, what do I need to do, Matt? This was funny because I, I've known you for a while. We, you know, we, 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 we chat on the phone sometimes, we text a lot. I've known you for a while. I actually have never seen you so excited as when you got a hold of the videos. <laughs> and he's, you, and I know you're, you're excitable in videos and stuff like that, but usually when we're talking, you're like, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it, you know. He's sending me, He's sending me pictures. He's like, oh my God, I never knew I could do this. And I see this picture fly up on my phone. Oh my God, I never knew I could do this. I see <laughs> well, another picture come up. That is, that is true. I did get, when, <laughs> the times when I'm practicing to make a video, like yeah. the, I've made a bunch of videos to help promote this, but I, I would sit there practicing and I'd be like, oh my God, 
Oh my God! You genuinely did it. got excited. I like did. this was not this was not a, a sales thing. This was before we were ever on camera. Yeah. You genuinely got excited over the stuff you were doing. But if you'd like to get excited, like I got excited, <laughs> you can go to mattk.com/fro. You can get a preview of what you're gonna. Actually, this is more of a preview of what you're gonna see in his guide anyway, because this is like giving away part of it. But if you find that you want to go ahead and try it out, use the code fro at checkout. This says a hundred bucks off. It's more than a hundred bucks off. This was just for math purposes. It's just use the code FRO at checkout. You'll see how much it takes off while the sale is going on. Instantly download everything and you're gonna get right into learning what you need to learn in Photoshop. That's a big part, as you, you mentioned, because I, I do something, you and I do something that I don't think a lot of people do is when you buy our stuff, you download it and keep it. Yeah. Right? Yours too. Yeah, you download it, you keep it. Download, it's not a subscription. No. It's not, you're not gonna get whacked for it every you month or every year. It. You download, you keep it, and uh, it's, it's yours. Yeah, save it, put it on a hard drive, put it on a jump drive, put it somewhere that you can just always get access to it because that's why we give it to you so you can learn from it. A lot of people ask if you can put it on an iPad and it's, it'll the videos will transfer to an iPad. Once it's like unzipped. Any, yeah, once it's unzipped. Unzipped. Don't, don't, I know. We, I get that question. I a get lot that too. email a lot. But if you're on a if you're on a Surface, Microsoft Surface, yeah. you can unzip right on there. So what do we got next? That was that was really good. All oh, right, I, I've got a list here. Look, yeah, I have got, I have yeah, I have you, notes. You've got the list. What are we doing today? Um, anyway, so we've done. Wow, we did a lot. So we're going to go to selection tool, Selections. cutting things out. This is something that I fail at all the time, and Stephen tells me how bad my edits are for my my thumbnails. Uh, because usually I'm trying to cut my hair out. So I sent Matt a bunch of stuff here and he's gonna teach us his ways. And you got pretty excited over the selection stuff and you missed the key tool because when I was I practicing did. before, you, you were like, how'd you do that? I'm like, oh, All right. I want that tool. Let's go simple. And then we're gonna, we're gonna go crazy in a second. So we open up your one photo here, kind of a you know, blah blue sky. And then you got another one of the Grand Canyon that had an awesome sky. Now let's start to talk about combining two images together. Um, and most of, the, most of the time, that hinges on a selection. You, if you're going to combine them, you usually don't just want to paste it on top of the other and be done. You want to select and, and merge them. So what we do, we'll go over here. There's a tool called the Quick Selection Tool. And this is probably, this has taken the place of just about every selection tool that has, has kind of come across over the years. So, you know, you probably watch YouTube. I watch YouTube videos, and I'll still watch these videos where I see somebody like painstakingly selecting something with the pen tool. Mm. And I just want to like tell them like, it's so much better this way. Like I've done them both ways, and trust me, I, it's so much better and easier this way. So, the quick selection tool is a brush, and you, you make it bigger with the right bracket key. You can make it smaller with the left, bra left bracket key, but you paint on an area you want to select. No so we, way. We want to select the sky. Steven, did you know this existed? <laughs> I didn't know this existed either. <laughs> so, who, I, I, uh, boy, I would just sit there, I'd hit, the la I'd hit the magic wand tool 300 times trying to make it work. And it's funny, you know, because I think, I think just by nature, people watching videos are like, oh, you guys are playing it up. Like, you, you, like, you, like, I could say like I'm here, like I see these, I'm talking to these guys, they didn't know this stuff existed, so. It's pretty cool, you just, you paint a selection on and it, it finds edges. Um, so I'm basically saying, hey, I, I wanna target this area for something. Now what do I wanna target it for? I go over to this photo and I do the same exact thing. Just paint over the sky. It's a beautiful sky. And it made it as a nice sky. Paint over the sky, make a selection, and then what we're gonna do is copy it. So edit copy, it is the same copy in every other program you use on anything else in your life in your computer. Yeah. Edit copy. So I basically just copied this to the computer's memory. Go back over here and then I go edit paste. But instead of just pasting it in, I can tell Photoshop, I want you to paste it into something that I already created. And it'll pop in there. And here's what's cool about it is we can resize it. And because I made that selection, see how it never goes below that? And that's because I made a selection. I basically gave it a target before that I wanted to work with. So I can just drop it in. And then the nice thing about, oh, I might have missed here, hold on. 
to stretch it down a little bit. There we go. Um, and then the nice thing about, because we talked about layers, and layers are kind of covered early in the system because they're, they're the building block of, of everything Photoshop. Um, because we have it on a separate layer, I can change the opacity. I can, I can go into hue and saturation. And I can say, you know, desaturate, saturate. I don't want to saturate, but I can say desaturate it a little bit, make it brighter, make it darker. Like you, you've got all of this control over that one layer. I don't have to, I don't have to brush and mask and do all those things because I really already did the work when I replaced the now, sky. Do you, in your own landscape stuff, do you replace skies from time to time? I, I have no aversion to replacing a sky. The, the one thing that I tell people is every time I do a sky replacement tutorial, it takes me about a half of a day to find the images to do it with. It's, it's actually not the selection. The selection's the easy, when, when you're watching, when you see what we're about to do with your hair in a second, yeah. you're gonna realize the selection's the easy part. It's incredibly difficult to take a scene that had a gray sky and make it look like it had a sunny sky. Right to take a sunny sky and make it look like it had a sunset sky. It's incredibly difficult. There's just there's so much else that's happening in the scene that our eyes don't pick up on and, until we see it. So I have no aversion to it. It's just, it's a hard thing to do. Anyway, so basic selection. Yeah. All we did was use a quick selection tool. So and that's now, something a lot of people want to do is be able to jump from uh, get one screen to the next screen. Sorry, one sky to the one next sky. One sky to the next one, yeah. And keep in mind, guys, these are, these are quick edits. These are literally two minute edits yeah. or less. So they may not be the most perfect, they just give you the gist of what you can do and you can tweak from there. Yeah, I mean, so here, you, here. Well, you know what, dude, let's, Go for let's it. roll with it. Let's show all the little nuances of things that we can do. So this... Stop giving away the farm, man. <laughs> it's your farm. <laughs> this, uh, this, this kind of ridge line back here is, is slanted and tilted. So the sky that you had, I think, worked great when you had that perfect, almost perfect horizon going straight across. I get my line straight. You do get your line straight. Um, in this example here, I think we're, it's kind of missing a little. So there's a well, couple things. I can't things. get the line straight when the mountains aren't straight. But you know what you can do? No. We can go up into this little thing here. If you go under the edit menu, there's If you something say crop, called, I will punch you. Puppet warp. <laughs> puppet warp? There's this thing <laughs> called puppet warp. And so what it does is it will let me go in here. Here, let's go Steven, back. Steven, did you know puppet warp existed? No, he didn't know this either. It will let me go in here. The only reason I knew Puppet warp, warp existed is because I saw it in your video guide, and I'm just like, I don't want to learn this. <laughs> I can put all these little points on this mesh here, and then I can start to kind of nudge them up and down. And what, what, is, it, what is it moving right now? Oh. It's, like, it's just like little, pop, it's this mesh. It's like it just puts a mesh grid over things, and so it lets me just nudge certain areas without necessarily nudging the entire image. Oh, wow. So I can actually take this and almost, in a way, conform it. I get it now. You're moving to the shape smaller things that I want, but you'll notice it's not really messing with. When I move a point down here, if you look up top, yeah, yeah. See, it's not really messing too much with that. And this is in the system too. Yes. Who knew? Who knew? You did. You made it. So, so that's a, a nice, easy way to, to help do that, too. Okay. So, guys, again, you can go to mattk.com slash fro. Use the code fro at checkout to save over 100 bucks, And Matt's going to tell us everything that you get inside of his system. Cool. So, uh, so, obviously, you get the videos. Download them. Keep them. It's not a subscription. You, you buy it. You download them. Keep them forever. You can put them on your iPad. You can put them on another laptop or something. Um, so, you get all the videos to download. Uh, you get all the photos that I used in there. So every video and any photo that I use, you get the same photo so you can follow along. It's not, you know, it's not like you're not left to go off on your own and try to figure it out. A big one that, you, that we include with this is it's got a PDF cheat sheet of all of the lessons. So it's not meant, it's not meant to be a book that you have to read through to relearn all of the stuff. The idea behind it is, is you watch something and then maybe a week later, you're like, oh, crap, man. You don't want to go sit there and watch the whole video again. You can open up the PDF and go to that lesson, and it's got just basically an outline of the steps. You know, oh, nice. Step one, select this tool. Step two, paint with black. Step three, do this. Oh, that's um, cool. It's, it's actually probably one of the more popular kind of add-ons that we give from just 
from what people usually tell me about that. So that's a big one. So uh, yeah, you get all the videos, you get all the, uh, the, the files to follow along, and, um, and the PDF cheat sheet, and then the, there's a big shortcut guide in there as well. So, so there's lots of bonuses, lots, lots of good of stuff. stuff. Lots of stuff. So again, 11 hours worth of education. And what I love, the thing that is the best part, is you may watch it and forget how to do it. You can just go, I sit there and have the video open on one screen, or in the background, I watch it, then I go into Photoshop myself, do what I need to do, and then go back to the video to learn the next step. So you have the ability to do that because once you buy this, you own it, just double back it up, save it, put it on whatever you need to do to watch it again, but that's it. So go to mattk.com slash fro, use the code fro during checkout while the sale's going on to save over a hundred bucks. Now let's see where we go next. All right, you wanna go, uh, you, wanna, you wanna work with some hair? Yeah, yeah, let's work with some hair. Cause I fail at this part all the time. The picture of all pictures. Um, by the way, so I, I probably a lot of people don't know, um, when you open up a raw photo from Photoshop, all right, so if you go into Photoshop and you go file open, um, and the other thing, I'm, I'm in here, I'm actually using Bridge. So Bridge is Photoshop's file browser. So a lot of people say like, well, I got Lightroom, why would I need Bridge to look at my photos? You probably don't, but you have to understand there's a whole nother world out there of people that don't use Lightroom, right. with graphic designers, there's, there's tons of people. And then the other thing is, is, and I don't know if you do this, but I have photos that I don't bring into Lightroom. Like Lightroom doesn't have every single photo I've ever taken. Well, it has all my raw files. Yeah, it's got most of my, it's got most of my good stuff, but like if my mom sends me a photo and says, hey, can you do something with this? I don't take it and import it into Lightroom. If it's a raw photo, because my, my mom is, is now shooting and, and she shoots, so if it's a raw photo, I'll just open it up in Bridge. Nice. Double click, it opens up Camera Raw. These sliders here are exactly the same as Lightroom, as Lightroom's develop module. Okay, so everything you see there is exactly the same inside of Camera Raw. And I actually have a section on, on that in case people didn't know. But let's go ahead and open this up, bring it into Photoshop. So, quick selection tool, that's kind of our first, uh, our first line of defense. I make a brush, I can, again, make it bigger with the right bracket key, smaller with the left bracket key. And, oh, you want, here, you want to try select subject? Well, yeah, I was going to say, what's All the right. difference between those two? So, so select subject is Photoshop's new Sente. smart technology for, for selecting things. Um, from what I understand, it works on contrast, and it also sees blur. So if you have a, a lot of background blur to things, it'll actually see that blur and help select mm. it too. That's interesting. Um, and it, it uses faces. It's Adobe's, Adobe's kind of AI technology. So you can, we can try it. Let's go select subject. It'll actually, it should work great on this one in about 10 minutes. Well, you're MacBook Pro, man. I got 75 things running. There we go. So it worked good on this one. Um, Quick selection, you can see here, it would have done the same exact, you know, pretty much the same thing, just taking us a little bit longer. All right, so let's go back here to select subject. I'll take 10 minutes again, come on. It actually doesn't take that long no, to do. No, it's not that bad. And this is a full resolution RAW file, just right? Just think about when I had to move that, uh, when I used to do drop shadows on the 486 computer, Yeah. and then you'd move it, and then it'd have to draw the lines after 20 minutes, and I yeah. made a mistake and I had to undo it. <laughs> undo it. All right, so we got you selected. Um, now here, here's the magic of complex selections in Photoshop. These tools get you to the outline of the subject. Not most selections we do are not gonna be as good as what we did with the Grand Canyon photo. Like, no selection is that easy. Yeah. It's a good demo photo, but real world, it's not always that easy. This little, little guy up here, select and mask, this is the key to it all, all right? So the way that it works, Click on it, opens up a new dialog box. You can choose what background you want to put it over. So I can say, show it to me on black, show it to me on white, um, show, show me the mask version of it. Yes, so, look at that. Let's just go, there <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Let's it's like just my go. Jared Poland.com logo from way back in the day. <laughs> let's go on white, all right? So is the background white or it's just showing you this right now? It's right now, Right now, it basically took the selection we had, and then it's saying, hey, I'll let you put a different background on it based on oh, okay. what's here. And it looks really bad. 
Yeah, it looks it looks horrible. It's not supposed to look good at this point. My arms but still look good though. You know what? The the this is where everybody stops. They do. It's like it's, it's flowing. Um, this is where everybody stops because they're like, well, this thing didn't do anything. Yeah, right. yeah. So I I usually just this is, add a feather. This is where your jaw dropped this morning, because I started taking. There's a tool over here. It's called the Refine Edge Brush. Well, the second tool here. And the way that it works is you just paint. It's a brush. And you just paint. And it just goes through. It's like giving me a haircut. The edges. It's getting rid of the split. Steven, did you know this existed? <laughs> no, he didn't. So. Let's go take a look on black. See here, we you can actually see a, little, a couple little you know, white spots that are poking through there. Um, and that's why you have this option because this is the, the thing I try to tell people the most is people will freak out like, well, look at it on black, it's, I can't see. But what are you gonna put it over? Yeah. You know, are you gonna kill yourself trying to get it right when you're never gonna put it over something black? But, and we'll talk about that in a second here. But I think if we're gonna put it over a bright background, we're doing fine. Okay, so let's go down here. You can see it says output two, and it will let it, it lets us put it to a layer, the layer mask, whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm just going to say output to a selection. I'll click OK. All right. So now I have you selected. Man, I need to use this for my thumbnails. So let's go through. I'm going to have to watch this video back because I don't remember what he just did. Let's go through and here, let's you know what's two. good about that though? The whole point is you get to watch the video back. Yes. When you own it. Yes. Oh, Chitza Itza. All right, let's put you over here. So, I got you selected. How do we move you? Edit, copy. Copy. I learned that in the third over grade. Over here, edit, paste. <laughs> there you go. And then if I want to resize you, I just go to uh, free transform. Now, what's the difference between free, free transform and transform Edit transform. What do I go to edit transform and then I have to select something else? Okay, so you can go over here to edit and then you see free transform, which is just, it'll let me do, I can freely move whatever I want anywhere I want, hence the free. Go to edit transform. I always do scale. So scale is literally like I can't, I can't, I can't do, I can't uh, do perspective with it. I can just make it bigger or smaller. Um, That's what I always do, yeah. but I didn't know free transform was even Free there. transform is an easy way to get there. It's got a keyboard shortcut. You'll notice none of these have keyboard oh, shortcuts to them. I didn't know that. That's, so I, it was I always, right there. Yeah, I always just hit Command or Control T for free know, transform. I didn't know that. So there you go. Do you have a whole thing on shortcuts in I the do, thing? I do. Big shortcut guy. I should have watched that. So uh, <laughs> you could go in here to perspective transform, and you can see I can change perspective and all that, which we don't want to do in this one. Um, so I'd say over the bright sky, you look fine. Well, the hair looks fine. You. This is perfect for a thumbnail. This is literally like how to make a thumbnail. Exactly how to make a thumbnail. So over the bright sky, you look good. Now, a lot of the, a lot of the little tips I have in the selection part of the Photoshop system are, let's take you over the dark. The dark side. Background. So you can still see. Do you know got, I, I got some funky stuff going. I wouldn't on. go any further. I'd just leave it. All right. it, it well, I can't. Personally, I would. I can't. Be like, ah. That's why your thumbnails don't look good. Hey. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so we have little tricks that we can use to go in here. Like, it's it's bright, right? And we want to make it darker. I just go straight. I go straight to two photography tools: the dodge and the burn tool. We go to the burn tool, and I just paint. So that's one way. Another way is if I double click the layer, there's something called a glow. I like glow. I do glow all the time to hide do, imperfections. So this that we're going to hide the imperfection of the selection here. So what I'll do is if we change our blend modes, which I, I know over, nothing about. We, we go over that. We're actually, well, and we'll, we can talk about blend modes. But I sample the color of your hair, and then I can just play around 
with that slider. Look at that. Here. That's before. Oh. Look at it, yeah. Oh, uh, will you look at that. So, who, who knew that there was the way to cheat the system? Super easy way to, to kind of I didn't know what hide. multiply. I didn't know all those. Hide those little fringes. Oh, okay. So, and that's, that's pretty far down in the course. Like, we kind of... <laughs> We kind of dove right in. We, we dove right in toward, toward the, the, the latter third of the course. And yeah, I think the biggest thing is most people have to keep in mind is the, the main reason I built the Photoshop system the way I did is so I could build it up from scratch. Starting There's, with the most simple stuff. Starting with the simple stuff and then giving you the, 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 the there's a website, there's a video on the website, but the, the gist of it is I've seen a lot of Photoshop training over the years. I've done a lot of Photoshop training over the years. What'll happen is, is somebody will say, hey, can you make a course on layers? Boom, make a course on layers. Two months later, somebody will say, hey, can you make a course on selections? Sure, I make a course on selections. I can make a course on removing distractions. And the problem is, is one of those courses doesn't necessarily know that the other one existed. Yeah. I can't assume you bought my layers course if you're buying my selections course. So the problem with that is you get this fragmented training, right? You either get repetitive stuff or you get a selections course that never covered layers and you don't know what a layer is. And, and so. what, what I like in the guide is that I can watch the basic stuff and then I'm watching something further along and I realize that, oh, I'll just use that tool I learned about earlier. So it's, it's a building block. Yeah. You learn something and you, you, you know, sometimes the, the super basic stuff may be just that. It's super basic, but that's, once you, I say it with photography, once you learn the fundamentals, you can then do anything you ever wanted. Yeah, so, I'm and gonna, that's the key behind it. I'm gonna promote it again. Go to mattk.com slash fro, use the code fro at checkout to save over 100 bucks, 11 hour guide. If you like what you're seeing here, you have it all in the video guide. So, this is good stuff, that's great stuff, they all work. Go check it out. What's next? What's next? Um, I've got on my list, we've got, we've cut me out. We've got selection tool, that cutting stuff. We do liquefy. Oh, you want to do liquefy? All right, we're going to liquefy you again. Mm. This is one of those tools. It can be used for purposes of good or evil. Um, you see a lot of people, and I think you see a lot of people misuse it. We'll talk know? about what liquefy is and why you would use it. So liquefy, it's, if you think you get a, basically a brush, a circle, and you can, here, I can talk about it all I want. I get a little brush and hey, I can do that. It's art right? now. It's art, <laughs> fine art. Um, <laughs> I, could, I could go in here, now you don't, see I, I actually do it on my nose all the time because I have a big nose, but you don't have a big nose. What are you talking um, about? I can go in here and pucker. Where's Make this? Make your nose smaller. How are you doing, you were just clicking on it? See? Yeah, I mean, I don't mind my nose. Yeah, no, you don't. You you don't need it, but I I've got a I got a bigger nose. They so call I do. those honkers. Honkers. I got a big honker. <laughs> Polish guy from New Jersey. It's uh, it's. it's hey. So uh, it's uh, there's the pucker tool, and then there's a bloat tool. So if you wanted to. Wait, where's that? Oh, you were on a specific tool. Holy yeah, Jesus. Yeah. So there's pucker and bloat. Pucker and bloat. Pucker and bloat. That's the name of my two fish. So. <laughs> so you know, of course. Your arms are never big enough. Let me just preface this with this photo is probably from 2015. You've got, you've put my, on a lot of mass since I have, then. I, put, I have put on more mass, but why don't, yeah, show us what you're gonna do. Yeah, so, I mean, your arms are never big enough, so we can. Oh, look at those triceps getting bigger. Push them out there, get a little bit of a shoulder action going on. There we go. And honestly, I don't really use it for this stuff. Yeah. You can have some fun with it. Um, I don't, here, let's look at the before and after, because it should be subtle, but, yeah, you got a little bit. Yeah. Oh, and I see the nose and everything. No, what, what's a practical use? So, to me, to me, a practical use is the, the, little, the little details from something that just bug you. Yeah. Um, and things that would be hard hard to notice, especially if you don't have a big crew with you, you don't have a stylist with you, you don't have somebody that's doing all, a lot of different things. Um, I always see it in clothing. So you always see like a skirt so or like a, a shirt shop. that's kind of, yeah, product, anything, anything that's got something kind of bulging or sticking out of it that, that looks awkward. So, and this is, again, I, I don't know that I would do this on this photo of you, 
but there are many photos that I've taken of people where the shirt's wrinkly or whatever, and it just looks awkward, you know? Yeah. So your, your shirt's kind of, you know, flared out over here, probably because of the massive biceps. <laughs> Actually, it's because uh, everybody's yelling at the screen right now. It's because I wear too small of a shirt. Because you're wearing a Smedium. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> so so we, can, we can tuck that in. Um, there's a, and just to show you, there's a neat little tool here, too. There's something called the freeze mask tool. So, th so the practical use, partly before you even get into all that, is people do fashion photography all the time for websites, for uh, any e-commerce site. This may be used there. Yeah. Anything where you want to nudge a part of a person, place, or a thing in a direction. Yeah. This is really the way to do it. So there's a little tool here called the freeze mask tool. And I, I mention it because a lot of people miss it. And what they'll do is they'll start pushing and shoving and moving things. Um, and it doesn't work the way they think. But what I can do is I can freeze this and say, don't mess. Don't mess with this part of the photo. So anything that's red, oh, don't that's mess with it. It's protecting it. All right. Now I go over here to really the main tool in Liquify. It's called the forward warp tool. Great name. And I go over here. And then I can just nudge. Whoop, don't get the background. I can just nudge that in. And you'll notice I'm doing it really slow and kind of tiny little movements. And if I have one tip, if you, got, if you guys walk away with one thing from this for Liquify, it's, it's all about tiny little movements. So what people will do, everybody will grab it and they'll start doing this. And they're like, well, I can't, how come I can't nudge this in the right way? You know, why is it, why is it not going the right way? It's, it, you got to just, if you're going to do anything, you do small, tiny movements. So just it's like I did over here. you can do that. So can you move my eyes apart? Um, it, it does. It, so for retouchers, and it, I think this is, this is for high end, you know, me, me taking pictures of my family. I'm never going to do stuff yeah. like this. Um, this is for high end fashion retouchers, beauty retouching. There's a whole section over here called Face Aware Liquify. And big eyes, big eyes. Let's get make, some big eyes. Whoa, hey. You get the little hey now. squint going in there. Eye height. Yeah, and you can even link both eyes together. Here, we'll make them all big. Eye width. If maybe I could see better. Eye tilt. There we go. <laughs> Hi. Nose. So. It, it recognizes all these little, see I use this stuff on my nose. Uh, I can even give you. A smile. Oh, I never smile, so there, there you, you go. go. Hey. That would have made my mom proud. She'd be like, hey, he's smiling. Give you that little upper lip there, a face shape. We can make a bigger forehead. <laughs> this thing's amazing. It really is pretty cool. But I, I, most of us aren't going to use it on photos like this. Yeah. But um, again, high end fashion beauty retouchers you use this all day long. Nice. So click OK, you're done. Think of, think of having five or 10 of those little sleeve things yeah. in a photo. It's those little subtle things that when you put them all together, it makes a difference. So, kind of to throw a monkey wrench at you, we didn't talk about this yet. If, I mean, if purple wasn't my favorite color and we wanted to change the color of the shirt, what do we do? Because I know a lot of people want to know how to change color yeah. of something. Yeah. So, so especially if there's already color there, it's super easy. Um, there, there's this whole section here. If you go to the window menu to adjustments, all right, this, this adjustments area, this is, this is another one of those hubs inside of Photoshop. Like layers are a big part, masks are a big part, brushes and adjustments are, are a big part. So they have an adjustment that does just about anything color or tonal wise to the photo. So for an example, we can go to hue and saturation. Is this in okay. the guide too? This is in the guide. Man, I missed that part too. And I can change the hue so we can go more toward, say you want to do a greenish color. Uh-huh. All right. I can even change the saturation. And I know you're changing too. We'll get to that in a second. Um, and I can even make it lighter or darker. Next thing you know, I'll be an Oompa Loompa. There you go. <laughs> You're looking like it. Um, and now well, the cool we'd need, thing. We'd need the liquify tool to make me more Oompa Loompa. The, the cool thing about this is, is it comes on its own layer. So it means at any point I can change it. I can go back. I, if I don't like the color two weeks from now, I can go back and open up this file, double click it. And it, these are a live adjustment. So I can come back and change huh. it. So it doesn't happen as much for me because I edit mostly for me. 
So I don't typically change my mind in two weeks and make sure you go back. But I guess but if, if you have a client. Yeah, if you're selling shirts and they want to get see what oh, yeah. it would look yeah. like, I could use this too. Absolutely. So you can always go back in there and change it. And then it's also got what they call a layer mask. If you're new to layer masking, it's pretty simple. The layer mask takes white or black. This is the first video I learned from when I got the system. Yeah. I wanted to learn how to layer mask. Well, layer mask takes white me. or black. You only have two choices, white or black. If white doesn't work, try black. Yeah. If the mask is already white, you paint on it with black. So in this case, I would you know, paint away your skin and all that other Could stuff. Could we use that we, selection paintbrush thing? And what we'd want to use is to use some combination of, you know, take the quick selection tool and start to select these areas. Nice. You know, and then instead of painting with black, Photoshop will also just let you fill. I didn't know that either. With black right there and so we won't go through the whole thing yeah, but yeah, yeah. that would be the the process of precisely going through that but and you're doing it. using multiple tools yep all right so uh <laughs> i'll we'll, close that one i can't look at it anymore <laughs> i can't look at this anymore either so all right we'll, we'll again all of this stuff is in matt k's guide if you go to the photoshop system if you go to mattk.com slash fro Use the code FRO while the sale is still going on. You can save over 100 bucks. Get all the stuff that we're talking about now and more. And there's one more thing we want to go through to show you because this was the one when I, I emailed you yeah, that I did it. Yeah. I was all like, I've seen this done for years and I just did it myself. Not perfect, but I got the gist of it and I made it work. Yeah. This, is a, this is one of those shots where you take, say, somebody's jumping and you take seven or eight shots, and then you have it boom, 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 boom. It's a sequential thing. I, this, I can't wait to watch this. <laughs> I did this I did this with my iPhone. Um, my family, we went skiing the other week, and I take these, I'll, I'll get down low, my kids will go, go over these jumps, and you just turn it on burst mode. And so I did a really good one with my iPhone. There's a good blue sky behind it, but the, the quality is amazing, too. Do they have an app for automatically doing it yet? I hope not, because then I, I start to run out of a job, so. Why don't you make the app, Matt? I'll I talk like to, teaching it better. Let me talk to my developers. I like teaching it better. <laughs> I, I realize I should, not, I, don't, I should not develop software. I should just teach it. All right, so we're going we're gonna to open up three different photos here. And you could do it with as many as you want. Yeah, you, but for you, time you, you had more, and I just we're, for time purposes, we're going to cut it down. So we've got three different ones. We've got the start of a jump here. We've got another one here. We've got another one here. So the first thing we need to do is get them all into the same Photoshop document. Yeah. Um, pretty simple. We just go over here, select all, copy, and then go back over here, paste. Just go to the other one. Again, select all. You'll start to figure out keyboard shortcuts for this stuff. Every section in the, in the system has a tips video at the end of it. Hmm. And the tips video is kind of meant like, there's a lot of things in Photoshop, you just watch the section on layers. So rather than show you every tip in Photoshop, here's like my 10, here's like my 10 go-to shortcuts or tips for layers. Do you know what we call those in my video guides? Tips. Just the tips. Just the tips. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> but I actually learned from your guide there's a more simple way to do this than copy and pasting. You go into Lightroom and you select three of them yeah. and you say open all as layers. Probably worth mentioning, that there's a whole part <laughs> called Light or, or Photoshop for Lightroom users in, in the guide that, that walks through, I think it's like 20 different examples of, I'm in Lightroom, I want to do this in Photoshop, how do I do it? Yeah. And, and you walk through it. You still have to know layers and you still sure. have to know all those other things. But So we now have three different layers on top of each other. You handheld it, which I'm glad you did, like, because it's almost too easy to do if it's on a tripod. Because if it's on a tripod, I just start erasing away. Yeah. But because you handheld it, um, and that's more real world, I can select, I can just shift click to select these layers. And then Photoshop's got something called auto align. It's right under the edit menu. So you just go over here, you auto align, I've never done anything but auto. And what it'll do is it'll kind of manipulate everything so that they line up on top of each other. I don't know how they come up with this stuff. So now when I turn one off, watch. 
Steven, are you seeing this? Yeah, thumbs up, man. That? That's, that was easier than uh, when I attempted to do it. <laughs> so, so the photos line up now. So now it really just becomes a matter of two things. Number one, because it's bugging me. Um, because it does that, you have to crop a little bit out. Mm. Which you could use Content Aware and fill it into. But we'll crop it. So you got to crop that out. And then we go over here. Remember, we got two ways. You got the, the easy, destructive way, which is the eraser tool. I can press E. I don't really know where she is. I'll just start to paint. So I am erasing. I'm poking a hole through the top layer. And if there's anything to pay attention to, guys, it's probably this. This free tip is worth what's in the video guide. No, no I said that wrong. <laughs> Just getting this free tip is worth... Imagine all the things you're going to learn in the video guide because this is really good. So, just so you get an overview of what we're doing, I basically, I basically t we had a photo, I just took scissors and cut out part of it. And that's why we're seeing that transparency behind. It's but kind of like what happened in Back to the Future. Exactly. When he fades away because he didn't exist. <laughs> it's kind of, but not quite. I'm poking through, there's, I turned the, the photo underneath it off, but if I turn it back on, there she is. Don't forget, as Jared pointed out before, there's a shadow down there. You can't forget to bring the shadow back. All right. So we, we basically took scissors, cut through. We have a photo underneath. That's what we see. Now, we've got the same thing, right? So there's that photo, and then there's the landing over there. So we go onto this layer, take our scissors, cut through. Inevitably, you're going to have people that are walking in the background that are moving or not moving. It's up to you how much you erase or don't erase away. But I erase enough so that you don't have half of a person sitting there. Okay? So now we see her down there, right? But if I turn the top layer on, I don't see it. Hopefully it makes sense. We didn't cut out the top layer. Right. Yet. So we also have to just go over here and cut out the top layer. And that's the destructive way of doing it. That's the destructive way. Again, just for sake of time and whatnot, if you want, you know. I, I don't know. No, you want, no, do you want to do no, it? No, I did right. it. I I'll, made a video about this. Do, OK, you did it. You I did, did it. a video did where it. I did it the other way, uh, not as, I did it the non-destructive way. But I also gave you that video. That's free. That's up there, too. But I learned it all from Matt. So there you go. That's Pretty better cool than what stuff. I did. Pretty cool stuff. Wow. So Nice. So there's a lot of stuff right there. That was about a little over an hour of information. Dude, really? I, I feel like we're... You would just keep going on and give going. it all yeah. away. <laughs> Steve, can we'll I get be here this, for 11 hours. this back up on the screen real quick? Guys, this is why we're here. If you enjoyed this information, if you learned anything from this and you feel like you could learn more and you really want to take it to a whole new level, not to sound all salesy when they say take it to the next level, go to mattk.com slash fro. You saw what he taught you here in this hour. Imagine what you're going to learn having the entire Photoshop system. mattk.com slash fro. Use the code fro at checkout to save over a hundred bucks while the sale's going on. After the sale's over, hundred bucks discount is gone. You're going to pay more money. Grab it right now. You saw what he could do. It gets even better inside the whole guide. Cool. Yeah, you got anything else? No, man. Love to, uh, happy to, happy to help, so. Well, thank you very much for coming down. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks I love for- love the poker table. Thank you. For playing cards after this. If you would like. I have uh, chem cards. <laughs> They're really good. So thank, thank you for coming down. And guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something. If you decide that the video guide is for you, again, and you want to get the Photoshop system, go to mattk.com slash fro. Use the code fro at checkout. Save big. Learn a lot. It comes in handy. I learned a ton from it, and I think you will too. So thank you for watching. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya. Do I have to? Yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to do the gunfight. Is that only once in a while? Well, you have Is to that, get the point right. Is that every time you say it? Yeah, I, it, it, I instituted it a long time ago. So go to mattk.com slash fro, use the code fro at checkout, <laughs> and that's it. See ya.